off, I want everyone on the panel to introduce themselves and tell us what it is that you do. Hello, I am Tamiko McBride. I own Strap Boutique and I own Down the Lord Designs, which is a hair salon. Hey everyone, my name is Chelsea Warren and I am the CEO of Optimum Body and an anesthesia, modern anesthesia line. Oh, my name is Terrell Davis, and I am a CEO of Tea Time Management, which is an investor in Superhero Chef's restaurant chain, um, Your Water. Shout out to Your Water, and a lot of other few small investments that we do. What's up, y'all? I am Gloria Pride. I'm the CEO of the Beauty Life Studio, the makeup studio here in Huntsville. I am also the founder of Slave Prey Nation, a women's empowerment movement, and I am a Forex educator and investor. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Matthew Jones. Uh, I'm the only stud of my team to have my own TV show, uh, my own clothing brand. Uh, I'm so uh, field engineer for Rob's work. Uh, I contract like housing and real estate business as well. Let's give it up to these people up front because they are amazing in the things that they do. First things first. One thing about being an entrepreneur, there are different challenges different obstacles that you must overcome. Everybody's journey is not the same. So if there's anyone above or up there that don't mind sharing their journey or what helped them get to the point that they are today. I thought I told Mark to just cut the music. Hold on, okay. DJ Immaculate. <laughs> And he's my friend. I can kid with him like that. I think we're going to have a good Do I need to repeat what I said or you guys done it? I have stated that being an entrepreneur or just being a business owner, you come across many different obstacles, many different challenges, and everybody's journey and story is not the same. So if anyone on that side doesn't mind sharing their journey or their story to get them to where they are, we will love to hear your story. So um, I was a salon owner before I opened up my clothing store. And actually I was a shoe store first. Um, and the shoe store didn't do really well. So I said, okay, let me incorporate clothes. And the clothes really took off. So I ended up opening up a um, clothing boutique. And I thought it was really going to be easy um, because the hair um, part was easy. Once I got out there and I um, advertised it was easy building up my clientele. I, I was really good at doing what I was doing, so I thought the fashion business was going to be the same. But it was not the same. Um, I had many stressful days, nights. Um, you know, people that open up a, a clothing store think it's like really easy. Let me just get these clothes. They're going to like them. They're going to buy them. And that's it, but it's not like that. It's levels to it. Um, everybody likes different things. Of course, you have social media now that's trending, so everybody wants what um, the Instagram models are wearing. Um, things like that, so it, it's kind of hard to just kind of, you know, do your own thing. You kind of have to go with the flow um, that, that the social media is going with and everything. So, it was really hard. Um, like I said, I had many stressful nights, many nights I cried. I was like, this is not for me. Um, I didn't want to do this anymore. It's too stressful. And then I prayed, and I should have prayed first, actually. But once I prayed, I, you know, God gave me this humbling spirit to keep going. And that's what I did. And I've been in the business for about It'll be six years in November, and it's it's going well. It's not going like I want it to go, but it's going good. So I, I really appreciate the struggle. So 
So I can actually maybe back over what Samika said because especially the fashion industry is extremely hard. Um, and for me, I am a designer and I already have a setback because I don't know how to sew. So I'm already have to, I already have to um, find manufacturers. So with me, I started my collection while well, I started designing my collection in 2017. And the reason is when you open up a business, you have to love what you do. Um, because it's going to be so many trials and if you don't love it, you're easily just going to give up. Um, so with me, I designed a collection in 2017. Um, I did all the research and I found a manufacturer in New York. Um, I didn't ask anyone for advice. Well, actually, I didn't know anyone to ask, so I just Googled everything. Um, I found a manufacturer myself and it cost thousands of dollars to design your own. Um, so I put about, well, I don't want to say that. I put money into it um, in New York and it fell through. Like, I thought it was going to be easy. I literally thought I'm going to sketch something, they're going to design it, and I'm going to have my stuff. But when I got my samples back, um, I didn't like them at all. I didn't like the company. Um, and so it takes about, about, it takes about like three to five months, close to a year to really find a manufacturer because you have to build a relationship with these people. It's not what you're just giving to to get candy from real quick. You gotta actually be communicating with these people. Um, and so I had that manufacturer and I didn't like them. And then a year later, like I wanted to give up, but then I just said, you know what, let me focus on other things. Um, and then in March, I found another manufacturer. So I put more money into this manufacturer with the same collection. So I thought this was gonna be, you know, easy. I'm like, okay, this has to be it. And I thought that God gave me a sign because where I found them, I thought it was like perfect timing. Did work with them, put money in there, and it fell through again. So I was just like, you know what? I'm just gonna have to really just wait on it. But now I found another manufacturer. And so I'm hoping that, you know, I'm and I'm hoping that this one works well. Um, I've done a lot of different things. I've done things differently. Um, I didn't just, you know, just give my money. I actually wanted to see, like, their work. I want the lady actually who I'm working with, she was, like, a strong believer in God. And I really believe that, you know, that foundation is very important when you're starting your business. And so it's extremely hard. And I'm actually sitting here actually still in the process. And it's now 2019. So oftentimes things just don't go right away. You don't just literally open up a business and it starts running. Like you really have to put in that time and you really have to love what you do. So, so I would say my journey was, um, I started when I was in college, of course, graduated in 2017. And I think that's the perfect time to really start a business because you kind of have a safety net to fall back on if something were to happen. Um, my background is in accounting, so the first thing I did was just being able to see opportunities through problems. Um, I'm a really big um, believer on making sure I find out the problem first, and then from there I can create a business from that. So I remember coming back one year, um, during my sophomore year, and um, I just did my tax return. And um, I found out about this credit called the American Opportunity Tax Credit, which is like $1,000 back for students. Now, I didn't know about it. You know, that kind of saves the lives for, so when I came back, I was, it, kind of shocked that no one really knew about it. And from there, that kind of started my company, Tea Time Management, which I first started off as being a tax company. Um, and from there, like, that was just the breaking point of realizing, like, a lot of people didn't have this. And even though, yeah, you compete against TurboTax and other these companies, you have to be innovative and find out what's different for you. So one of the things that we did is we created this thing called a Tea Time College Tour. And we would go on campuses and actually file taxes for students. And the university would pay for them. Um, it took me reaching out to 1,700 universities. That's almost probably 1,600 no's. And, um, no, I, and I'm being pretty serious. It took like three months to compile the information. Um, and then from there, we picked the top 40. Um, got some big schools like University of Central Florida, um, Texas A&M, some big schools like that. And we just tried it out. That was the first time that I realized, like, okay, this could be something big. And from my accounting firm, I, when I was at a point where I really just like, I'm about to go get a job because I'm done, you know. Um, one thing that I had to realize that I heard from somebody was that it's the difference between being a hustler and being an entrepreneur. And I was a hustle mode all the time. I was always hustling, hustling, hustling when I was doing makeup for my apartment to being in somebody else's salon, to open up my own studio. It was hustle mentality. And one thing that I had to realize is that I wasn't operating as a real entrepreneur. And so the difference really is the fact that um, when you're just hustling, you got all these different streams, right? But when you operate from an entrepreneur, for real, like you have a source with streams that come from the one source. And so my source is the beauty industry. I had to realize, no, you don't have to just do makeup. You can do 
makeup, you can teach classes, you can host events, you can sell products, you can have online courses. It's, it's so many things that you can do when you can create streams from one source instead of being a hustler and doing all these different things that drive you on a hamster wheel that make you want to give up. And even sometimes another bullet I have to bite is that um, if you really, like you said, if you're passionate about your dream, sometimes you have to do other things to make sure you can fund the dream. Everything that we do, we may not love it, but if it's legal and if you pay the bills and if it's going to fund what you really want to do, you know, sacrifice a few months or sacrifice a year to make that happen, you know, whatever that looks like. You may hate your job right now, but I'm sure you learned something from it, and I'm sure it can fund what you really want to do. You don't have to be there forever, but you got to get out of the mode of being... Uh, uh, you know, a starving artist. You don't have to go that route, you know, so if you can use wisdom and operate from entrepreneur instead of just hustling, 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 then you'll still stick in the game and your struggle won't be as bad. Like L'Oreal said, uh, I had a hustle mentality like, when I started my business. I ju just jumped straight head first, no advice, and asked about how to do that. I'm just gonna go all in. That's the mindset that I got. And it took me like about a year ago to like, to, if I stutter, y'all don't get mad. That's why, that's why they got stuck out, because I stuck. Anyway, right. no, <laughs> anyway, no, but I got I got that mentality to, to, to just like say, look, I need to slow down, find my pace, and do what I need to do, do what's right. As a man by the name of Warren Buffett that I listened to, and he made me realize, so he said, that what you love to do, you make it your hobby. There were other folks do, there were the things that other folks do, make it your business, so I had to think back, I gotta make what I love to do my business, so I had to slow down, get advice, get people to help me, because I couldn't do it by myself, and once I got help, got people around me, got a support team, got a support system, everything got better. I mean, I lost I lost a lot, lost money, sacrificed a lot. Some days I went without paying my life bill, eating food, because I want to I want to support my dream and do what I want to do, so I tell anybody, if you got a dream, something you want to do, stay focused, don't give up. Things gonna get hard. Like, I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you, say everything is easy, every day go by fine, because it don't. Everybody up and tell you, you're going to lose a lot, you're going to sacrifice a lot, but you just stay focused and keep God first and stay humble. Everything can get better. Okay, that was a quite bit of lot. But everyone does have a journey. I had a journey myself, and I will share my journey after the panel. Um, my next thing is, what inspired you to do what you do, or what is the drive that you have behind the things that you do? Because it seems like now, Everyone wants to open a business. Everyone wants to be an entrepreneur. So what is it in you that keeps you pushing for your own dream, even with so much competition around you? I'm gonna say generation well. I mean, um, when, it's, when I'm gone, dead gone, the time we didn't have kids, I want my kids to have some. They don't wanna go to college, that's cool. But I got something out there for them. They can keep fun and keep building, keep having something to, Keep our name alive, not my land and my business too as well. So that's like my main focus. See my family have to see what I want to do and make myself proud of myself. Um, yeah, just to piggyback off of that, definitely generational wealth. But um, also, I guess for one, just to make sure that my name supersedes me when I'm not here no more. You know, uh, a lot of the greats we know them after they pass or they get more clout once they're not here anymore. So, I mean, of course we want to be respecting the love while you're here, but I want to make sure that my name holds way when I'm not here anymore, so my family can be proud of. Um, but what inspires me while I am on earth is the fact that I just really, really, really like building up women. Even if, if it's for makeup, if it's, you know, internally, if it's helping you see yourself the way God sees you, if it's helping you run your bank account up, I just like, I like seeing women be bosses, especially women that look like me, you know. I can't speak for other races because I'm black. So I like helping as much as I can women that look like me, and that's what keeps me going. Um, I would have to say that what drives me to my success is that people survive off my success. And I say this because we all have, um, of course, like part of my restaurants that we have, we have a lot of, we have about maybe 300 people that work for us. And every day we have to deal with problems where they're literally surviving day to day based off of things that we pay. And that's a lot of pressure when you're trying to do certain things and making sure. So like a lot of times that your sex is, is tied to someone's survival. And I think sometimes you have to remember that like you have to go out and do certain things because that can be the thing that really allows them to be able to pay their bills, allows them to be able to make sure that their kids have education. And like just, and my other one is just breaking generational curses. 
So I feel like if you realize that if you're not successful, then there you have to keep in mind who along the line that could have met you and could have benefited off of something that you created that didn't happen. They always say the richest part of the in the whole world is the graveyard because that's the part where all the dreams, all the ideas that people didn't create and didn't see forth. So if you don't go out and create something, like that could be a benefit of me not successing because I'm going off of other people's successes. Just, you know, us being free, that's a success. Us being able to come out here and talk, be free, be able to eat what we want, that's a, you have to really value that and understand that your success is tied to someone else's survival. <laughs> Um, I'm going to piggyback on him because he basically summed it up for me. Um, actually, I'm not, it's kind of cliche for me to say, but I'm not, I know the boutique is not going to make me rich, but I love to make people happy and I like doing what I do and it makes me happy. So I'd rather be happy than to go and clock in somewhere that I'm miserable all day. So that's what keeps me going. Um, I, I want to be happy and I love when people come in the store and they say, oh, it's, it's my birthday or it's an anniversary and they find what they like and they excited and they send me pictures like that makes my day. So that motivates me to make, you know, other people happy. Okay, next thing. So this event is called Black, Black Leaders Activating Culture and Knowledge. Right? So I wanted to bring everybody together so we can support one another. How do y'all feel about the support system in the black owned businesses that we have today? <laughs> um, well, when you have a business, now firstly, um, I'm just gonna say this, you kind of can get, this is just like general. Um, I noticed that a lot of people, I see stuff on Instagram when people got mad when people don't support them. Um, for me, I never kind of, you know, looked at other people and said they kind of had to support me. But one thing that I feel strongly on is that I, I, if I have to just post, you, if people have my Instagram, you know, I'm constantly posting, you know, other businesses, um, other businesses because I am strong, I'm a strong advocate on that. Like I, you know, when I first met Tamiko, um, I wasn't, I don't even think I was her model yet, but I was like posting for her. Um, even like I do royalty styles before I was a probably a brand ambassador, I was posting for them or even just posting. I strongly believe in that um, and word of mouth. But definitely in the black community, it's kind of hard because I think a lot of people think that they're in competition with you. And um, it's really not that. Like if people was to really just support one another, then it would just be better. But the whole competition thing, I think that's where we lack in terms of supporting one another because, you know, I know everyone's trying to survive and make money, but they look at that person as a competition, so they don't really want to support you, and it's just kind of hard. So I think that would be best for us if we looked at each other as, um, you know, not support system, but we looked at each other as, you know, not competition, um, more like collaboration, because you could do a lot with collaboration, and I think that the support system would be in a better in the black community. Um, yeah, just to piggyback off of what Chelsea said, I think um, that is a lot of things of just having um, credibility. And I say that they always say there's a saying that they will first ask you why are you doing it, but then they'll ask you how did you do it. And I feel that you have to, in the black community, to, for your own, to support your own, you have to have a certain credibility, you have to have a certain life, you have to have the blue check, you have to go off these checklists to say like, okay, now you're ready for our consumer dollars. And we're the biggest push for, like when you look at the statistics of how much we're buying, we definitely have the money and we definitely have the backing, but I think that the issue is like that support, but that also that competition comes with credibility. Because once you reach a certain level, it's like, okay, now you deserve my dollars versus we can make a lot of multi-millionaires by just supporting our own. So I would say like, we just have to really find out how can we take that stigmatism, but that's really about breaking generational curses. And I think that's the meat of it because our society's kind of pinned us against each other and done that. That's, it's a deeper issue. It's kind of like, on the outside, it's like, oh, why don't you support? But it's a lot of like generational things that we would have to go through to really break that curse. I feel like let's tackle it more from that perspective. But um, yeah, that's pretty much what I have to say about Yep. I agree with him. That's, yeah, basically. I mean, it's deeper than, like like you said, it's deeper than just like what's on the surface. You know, um, like Chelsea said, it's the competition thing, but why are we in competition with each other? Because we're not used to being a collective unit, you know what I'm saying? And there goes 
back to we can take you all the way back you know to come over here on the boat so you know we don't have to go there but it really is it's some generational issues that i think we as the millennial generation have the like the creativity the authority the wisdom to like undo some of this stuff so i think that um having conversations like this is important because we really have to not not feel like we're in competition with each other you can literally do the same thing as somebody but have totally different results because you were graced to do it in a totally different way i mean if we if we have to look at each other like a body with different parts we all need every single part of the body i mean you go a day without your pinky i mean you feel like it's small but you need that you know what i'm saying so like we just really have to look at it like we're all one body with different functioning parts that need each other instead of i do this i do this and i'm gonna make sure i just do me because if i give you too much shine it's gonna take away from my spotlight that's the mentality that we have to break and it's, it's like rooted in generational division that I think it really is time for us to try to start, not try, but to come together, period. Well, you summed it up all right, I ain't got nothing to say. <laughs> I would like to add one thing. I think one thing that we need to start doing is more events like this um, because if, has anybody heard of the Black Wall Street story? Have you actually yes. read it? Like it's a pretty deep story about how like a community of us of how much we really built of owning our own schools, owning airports. And like, we really were like billionaires in this community. And like, it was like, if, if you haven't read that story, really go back and read that because it really starts off stuff like this. Being able to come together and be able to say, like they say that you, the dollar would basically go um, change a whole year before we go outside of the community. So therefore, like now, I think it's like 15 seconds that we, um, when we get it, when we get our money and we spend it, it's like 15 seconds before it goes outside to another community. But back in the day, like that was like a whole, and that was like in slavery and all that. So they built that community and it's sad because it goes back to like how systems, they burnt that down. Like they burnt that completely down. Like you have all these, and that was very hard to build up. Like that took years upon years to build again. That was in the middle, really, it was in, where is it in Arizona? Where is yeah. it? Oh, yeah, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Yeah, it's Oklahoma. So what I'm saying is like, I feel like having events like this is educating, saying, hey, these black businesses are accessible and we can keep that going on. But you know what? The fact that they burnt it down should speak volumes about the level of, of what can happen when you unify something. You know, the fact that they were intimidated by black people being so unified should speak volumes to us and inspire and encourage us to be like, oh yeah, y'all see us. When we come together, we make stuff happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Also, I, I want to speak a little bit about competition because I'm competitive. <laughs> it's all good. But it motivates me to do what I do. I think there is a such thing as being fun um, competition. You know, because I feel like even with rappers, Jay Z and Nas, when they had their little beef or whatever, that made them millions of dollars because they were competing, and after all of that, they knew what they were doing. Um, when I see other boutiques doing good, I love that, but it makes me really do good and go hard and compete with them and say, hey, let me, let me get on my grind and let me do this. So I think competition is good, but we got to keep it fun and we got to keep it positive. We don't want to like hate on, you know, the competition because everybody is, is trying to make it and like Chelsea said before, she supports, she reposts. If everybody do that, it's, it's, I mean, it's nothing that we can fail, but um, I just think sometimes competition is good. Okay, also, um, I do want everyone to know that it is an open floor, so if you do have any questions, just let me know and I will pass you the mic. Um, there are a lot, of, a lot of entrepreneurs in here, so I know that um, everyone is in different areas in their business. Some people may have just begun, some people may have been for a year or two or whatever it may have been. Um, but it's always good to get advice from another entrepreneur because everyone doesn't see the same thing that you see or you miss something. So I do want to ask you all, if it's something that you could advise another entrepreneur, what would you tell them? One thing I say I advise is build your team. Be to support system. Uh, one thing Tamika always told me, she don't believe what she told me a long time ago. Don't use your money, use other folks' money. Like, get a loan from the bank, build your credit up, uh, get financial advice before you just hop out there wasting money. Know what you're spending your money on, invest what you believe in. Just, don't just go spend the money 
on dumb stuff, bull crap, just know what you're spending your money on and invest wisely. Once you do that, everything will come together. To me, I told them a long time ago. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. Um, oh, so, okay, so I'm not going to say something about building a team, and that's very true. But one thing I will say is before, and it's different for every field, I guess, maybe, or, you know, whatever. Um, but make sure that you go hard by yourself with what you have or whatever resources, you know, whatever you have. Like, because a lot of times, to speak to what's real, say, like, people won't really rock with you until you have credibility. And so you cannot make or, you know, want people to be a part of your team when they feel like, well, what do you want me to do? Or you know what I'm saying? Like what direction are we going in? Or what have you built on your own to prove to me that you are serious about what you got going on? I'm not gonna be a part of a team that I don't even know if the CEO, the owner, the founder, the visionary has, you know, a ton of vision for what we're doing. So really try your best to build credibility, you know, from the ground up by yourself or with your best friend or whatever the case may be. So then when it's time to build a team, you don't even really have to go search and people will start to flock to you. For real star, I'm just gonna jump in to L'Oreal. I believe everything she just said. Only because L'Oreal was my um, mentor, and for the longest, she just used to look at me like, I hear you, okay, <laughs> all right. When you gonna do this, when you gonna do that? And I'd be like, wait a minute, I'm gonna get back to you on that. Um, so I look at you. <laughs> definitely credibility, definitely. Um, I would say the most valuable thing um, that I would advise is a relationships that you have. Um, the power of network is more than net worth. Um, and prime example is like when I was in college, I had this, uh, one of my mentors gave me, um, he met me during one of my pitches and he basically said, I don't have any financial money to give you right now, but I have a room that you can rent for free. It used to be an old bio lab. And I went into the bio lab, and it was the first time when I started my accounting firm, and I was like, well, they got syringes, they got a baby, something that grows babies in there. And I had to cover it all up. And he was like, you can't move anything out, you just have to make it work with what you have. So I covered as much as I could up and stored it on one side and just was grinding, just coming, creating. And, and this whole time, I would come to him, give him updates. He, he, he owned the building. And he was just watching me this whole time. And it just showed me that relationships are so important because a year ago, um, I was just got into the restaurant industry. And we were pitching the idea of I told my partner that I can open up two restaurants per year and I didn't have any money. Well, I didn't have that kind of money. Um, and I had him sign a contract and he was like on Food Network, Travel Channel, all these things. And I was like, I feel like I can make this happen. I at least know enough for relationships. <laughs> uh, <laughs> It took a whole year for me to pitch it. And for some reason, at the end of the year, I decided that, well, you know I had this mentor that had been mentoring me for four years. Let me just sit down with him. And I said, hey, let me sit down with you and your wife. We want to pitch you this restaurant idea. And he was like, well, I'm not really in the restaurant industry, but I'll definitely hear from you because, you know, we have that relationship. So he sat down and had the relationship. And I remember um, I brought another guy in the room as well. We, we killed, the, killed the presentation. Like, we came with our A1. Um, and I remember at the end of the presentation, he was like, he had a meeting before that, and usually business people, if they want to leave a meeting, they'll say, oh, I got a meeting that's going to be close by, so I got to leave a little early. That's like the go-to that they're trying to skip out on. <laughs> so um, by the end of the meeting, he was like telling his wife, go ahead, whatever. So I told them to write on a piece of paper of everything, like what their investment amount. I think we was asking for $300,000 for the meeting um, for it to build this first restaurant. And I remember going into the kitchen and opening up the envelopes and seeing like, hey, him and his wife want to invest $150,000. The other partner wanted to invest $100,000. And it was like mind-blowing because when I actually talked to him after, he said, I've been watching you for four years. And like, I've been seeing your ground, I've been seeing your work ethic. And even though you basically took that little space, you know, turned into a six-figure business, you were successful. And I know that whatever you touch, like, it's going to be successful. And he was like, I actually want to be a third partner. And like, by the end of the year, he invested over $1.2 million into the chain. He said, not only that, you know, he was gonna make sure that we can get that two restaurants. That's what I asked, that's exactly what I asked. I prayed on, he said, I wanna be a third partner, I'll make sure you have any funding, anything you need, you know, I have your back. But that all took relationships, like that didn't, like a lot of times we see a, the story, we're like, oh, that person just sold that company for that. No, that was four or five years that I didn't even know people were watching me, grinding me, and he trusted in me. So I would say the most valuable, valuable thing is like, who you know? Because if you don't know anyone, like you can get opportunities and stuff, like I always have this motto is that I get the deal and the money will always come. So if I want something, I go out and I close the deal or whatever it is and I'm like, okay, now where's the money? And that's kind of like my motto. So I would just encourage you that 
every person that you meet, make sure whether they're small or low, because you never know what they have. Because sometimes it could be the janitor that's kin to a celebrity or someone that's like, hey, or gives you that advice, that reason why they became a janitor, and you probably should know that before you get into that venture. So I would say at any level, you need to make sure you're building relations and stay in contact with them, because that's the only way that I can sit up here today and be successful is because of my connections and my relationships. Um, yes, that's exactly. I agree with Terrell. But if I can say anything, I would also say is be consistent. Um, be consistent to your grind. Be consistent to your business. Um, even if you don't have any money or any funds at that point, you can be, you can research. Like um, while my clothing's in manufacturing um, right now, I'm researching my marketing plan. Like how I'm going to promote this. What are my visuals going to be like? Um, I'm being consistent every time. Even when I my manufacturer fell through the first time. Um, instead of me giving up on my business, um, I wanted to be consistent and so I started, um, I went and got my business license, um, I trademarked my business, I did my LLC, um, I did everything that I you know, couldn't do, I didn't just give up. Um, and the second thing I would say is be you. Um, in a world full of you know, different people, stay true to who you are. Um, if there's certain things, like I know in my business, I've always you know, been Chelsea no matter who I've met. No matter the um, networking I've done, I've always maintained, I've been myself. Um, because honestly, you could have the same business as someone else. You guys could have the same um, ingredients, but the results won't be the same. So always stay true to who you are, um, your values, your morals, um, and don't have a slip up with those. <laughs> I'm going to say um, what you put into your business is what you're going to get out of it. Um, if you put a little time in it, you're going to get a little time out of it. You're going to get a little money. <laughs> and I know this for a fact because I'm speaking on what I've done. Um, like I said before, even because I do hair also, so sometimes I didn't give the boutique business a lot of time or a lot of care, and I didn't get nothing out of it. And thank God for Chelsea, because you always have to, don't be afraid to always, because I'm older, so, you know, she's way younger than me, but don't do the math. <laughs> But don't be afraid to ask somebody younger um, what to do or advice because they can give you the best advice. Like she was, she was a lot. She, she was a lot to my business, really. And she promoted and she gave me advice. I took the advice, um, but I started putting more into my business and I could see my business really taking off um, with what I was putting into it. So you have to put into your business what you want out of it. And like I said, if, if, if you don't really want nothing out of it, then don't put much into it. But I'm sure everybody is here to make money and to grind and, and to get you know everything plus out of their business so that's exactly what you're going to have to do you're going to have to put a lot into it a lot of hours when people are asleep at home you're going to be up you're going to be trying to talk to your vendors or whoever that you know you're in business with so it is a lot of early mornings late nights but at the end you'll be rewarded but I just I'm sorry <laughs> um, I just wanted to pick it back up on what she said um, about BU and just based on and where we're living right now is social media based look man all of us go through the same if not the same exact similar type of trial and tribulation man and social media will have you fooled on a lot of stuff man be you and do what you need to do to get the work done ain't none of this easy like I might sit back and do this and you might think just come with DJ there's a lot going on isn't that but Listen, do the work you need to do. There's no, there's no easy way out of none of this. It's going to take hard work for all of this. So you might see somebody, like I seen a little quote, it said, don't judge your chapter one based off their chapter 22 or whatever, how they do. Because, man, look, it's about how you take your losses. All it's going to take a lot of L's. It's, in this room, man, it's a lot of business people in here. A lot of people that got their own goals and a lot of people got their own thing going on. Don't judge based off of what somebody else got going on and think you're supposed to be in that same position at that same time as them. Everybody got their own path, everybody got their own thing that they going on, and I just wanted to say that it went out. Because, I'm sorry, because social media have a lot of people pull, just do, do what you do, man. <laughs>
we all look, we all us, we all grinders, man. We know we want at the end of the day. Everybody want the same, not not the same exactly. Everybody want to get there to the top where we need to be. Yeah. Lastly, I'm gonna pick up. <clears throat> I would just say, not necessarily believing your dream, but believing yourself. That's something that I myself have struggled with for the longest. I second guess myself every other day. Every time I have an idea, I reach out to one of my friends like, do this even sound right? Am I tripping? Like, okay, I'm not even gonna do this. And they're like, just come do it. I'm like, no, like, but at the same time, I fail to follow my own vision. Um, that's something that I have struggled with. That's something that I am personally working on. So I will say to everyone, believe in yourself. Take advantage of the strengths that you have. I have strengths that I don't even know I have, and I'm still trying to figure it out. But if you know exactly what it is, take advantage of it and just do what you want to do. Just go for it. Do not sleep on yourself. I'm no longer sleeping on myself today, because this is my one year anniversary. I started off, I started off with just lip glosses, and I have multiple products that I've not, I have not seen. Well, I didn't picture it to be here in one year. It's only been one year, and I'm so shocked at myself. So do not sleep on yourself at the end of the day. And before we close it out, do anyone have any questions, any comments? Okay, I'm going to pass the mic on. <laughs> Um, so, my main question, wait, let me pull it up, because it's a long question. <laughs> <laughs> my mama probably nervous, because she probably like, oh my God, what my child for that? <laughs> um, okay, so, of course, I, from time to time, work at the boutique with my mom. So, one of the things that I want to ask you all, um, as business owners is, how do you respond to family or friends always feeling like they need a discount? Or that one person who has been supporting you, and when I say support, you know, shopping with you, whether it's buying your hair, buying your clothes, um, that feel like you might owe them every time that they come. How do you respond to that without damaging that relationship? <laughs> well, while the panel figured that out, um, I would say that um, I am thankful for the friends that I do have. Um, I don't necessarily run into those issues. Um, my friends support me so much that sometimes I may just offer a discount just because they support that much. Um, if that do come around, um, I'm waiting to see these answers so I know how to deal with it. Um, but I have not actually dealt with that problem. But I am thankful for the friends that I do have because they do support. And I think um, just watching someone do what they do and how they grind, you respect that. So you can't do anything but pay the cost for that. That's, I mean, you got it. Um, but you know, everybody gonna run into that. It just is what it is. And I think every it's case by case scenario. It's not like it's just you just handle everybody the same because you can't. You know what I'm saying? Every relationship is different. Like my, if you if it's your sister, if it's your you know your cousin, you ain't talked to in five years. You know, like it's just different for every situation. Even when it comes to friends and other business partners, you know, sometimes you barter. It's just, uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Sometimes you may barter with you know with another business owner for a different trade or whatever the case may be. So every situation is different. But you know when somebody is really trying to get over on you, and at that point is you know. For one, you have to look at the value that you offer. Um, and if they can't put no respect on what you offer, then that's a reflection on them, not you. You know, that's one. Um, and then two, you just, when they try you, you just gotta stand your ground. It's a way to handle situations, it's a way to talk to people. We can talk, you know, with respect, but you have to stand your ground because if you don't, that person will tell the other person that you gave them something for $50 and it was $100 and then it's gonna trickle, trickle, trickle. And then people gonna feel like, they deserve that same discount, you know, or whatever case may be when they don't. So don't try not to, you know, get yourself in that type of bind, you know, it's case by case. But at the end of the day, stand your ground and people who respect you will shop with you and won't look for no discounts. 
Um, I would have to say to answer that question, I feel like that goes back to the credibility thing. Um, people pay for what they want, they'll pay for full price for when you have that particular standard. Um, I feel like that's why you need levels of separation. Um, any company that I have, I try not to be hands-on with it sometimes because it requires that step of like, that's not something I manage. I might invest in it, I might be a co-owner, but you do with that person and that person is responsible for giving you a discount. So I would say put the blame on whoever is in charge. Um, but I mean, that's kind of how you, <laughs> and then it also comes down to, there's two, there's two parts to it. Like you said, there's the relationship part and there's also the goals. And also it's about financial. So it's kind of like, if that person, if that's, Financially, from my financial head, whatever it takes to get a person in to sell a product, whatever the case might be, I have to do certain things for them. Now, that's that that component. But I would say the other part is just being able to have this separation. When you ever you have that, and being able to say like, hey, like this is my company, or someone else is doing, it. I can't do it. That person's managing it. That's their job. You now put that responsibility, and it gives that chance of saying, no, I'm not going to get the discount. But it is extremely hard um, because that's how we are. We always want the discount. But my whole model is. I will pay full things for anything that I pay for and I expect the same thing. So I, I rarely try to ask for a discount. Like it's more so like if I'm gonna come out, I'm gonna support you, I'm gonna pay. It's, it's no borrowing because at the end of the day, if I go to Walmart, I'm not arguing with the lady saying, give me a discount. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's just like, I feel like you have to get more of that mentality, but that's all about credibility. It's all about like, I know that I can't borrow that, so therefore you can't. So we're gonna, you know, that's, that's my take on it. Just because, so, you know, he's like a boss boss. And so, you know, he has this company where he can't do everything. But if you just starting off or whatever, or like, so sometimes you gotta fake it till you make it. Just to add, you know, to, to better understand what he just said about putting the blame on somebody else. I don't know how you mean it. Yeah. But it's like, so, so like, if you sell t-shirts or something, let's just start off with something like that. And, you know, somebody, your t-shirt 25, your homeboy wanted for $10. If you, even if you really don't have anybody that handles, you know, merch, you can well listen. You know, just to handle my merchandise, so I really can't even, I really can't even, you know, I don't even sell the stuff. So you're going to have to talk to him about that t-shirt price, and then when they go to Justin, it's $25, and that's just what it is. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like one of those things, but even if you really don't have nobody in place, find a friend. Do something so that that pressure is not always on you. Like, even with the Slam Prayer Weekend, Shameless Plug is going on next weekend in Birmingham, Alabama. But, um, like, I'm not, I'm not managing how much you paying for registration? It's online, or you gonna deal with somebody else? You know what I'm saying? So that pressure's not on me when somebody wants to come in and I can't do anything about it. So. And I always blame it on your financial guy. Like, not to add that in. I know even when it comes to like getting things, but a lot of the requests I get is requests for money. And, and as you become successful, you're gonna have people. That's another issue about how to say no to family and all that. I feel like whenever you have that escape goal, I always have a financial advisor you know, on I always say like, you know, you have to. He approves everything that I go moving forward. And I know a friend that he knows based off the relationship. We go talk and say, okay, that's something I want to invest or not. But I always say, oh, like that's something that my accountant, my financial advisor does with. That I really want to, but they manage all my books. Yeah. And then from there, they'll call me separately, like, oh, Terrell, you want to do it? And I'm like, no, nah, I'm not. Or yes, you know, I will. And then from there, it separates me from that. I feel like that's what your business. You really don't need that financial person. Like you said, fake it till you make it. They're the ones making your decisions, and you're trusting them. You're basically saying, I'm trusting them to handle that. So whatever decision they make, that's their authority. And I, you know, I don't want to step on their toes. Yeah, stop She said she knows it. I, I, um, I, I gonna fail at this part because I'm not, I'm not gonna say I'm too nice. Too nice. Okay, I'm too nice. It's my business. I just, sorry. Like sometimes, sometimes I just feel like, especially being a college student, like I always feel like sometimes. I'm sorry, I keep saying like, because I'm trying to be Ronnie Bush. I fail at discounts. I always try to give people discounts. I don't really know why. I just, I just feel happy. I know you got fifteen percent off. Maybe because like with fashion, it's like. If you have a music, I do student discounts at her school. If you've been there, I'd be like, are you a student? Fifteen percent off. Because sometimes, honestly, it's like moving weight. Like, no, not, not, not that thing. Right? Like, clothing and stuff like that. Because literally, we're trying to, like, to move product. Sometimes you do have to. Sometimes you do have to kind of not borrow, but sometimes you do have to say, well, if they like, <laughs> if it's sixty and the face looks a little bit, okay, well, I'll give it to you fifty-five. And then they be like, okay, I'll take it. So sometimes you do kind of have to bottom up the price. But with family, mamas, and friends, I do give my friends discounts. Um, I'm not going to be shameful. My friends kind of do. <clears throat> I can't pay my friends. 
and they support me a lot. Like they're they're always behind the scenes. Um, if I have an event, if I'm gonna new them my models or something, they're doing something. Um, the ones that do that do help, I have no, I don't second guess. If they buy something, they will get a discount. Especially because you know when you are, <clears throat> even if you do wholesale, you have manufacturing. Um, when you price your product. It's, it's, it's some needs where you can actually give, you know, people who are helping you, like my close friends, I give them discounts because, you know, they actually help. So. I'm not sure they go. Hold on, hold on. Just to piggyback off of, off of Chelsea, yes, I'm screaming. Yes, friend, you are too nice. But I'm a little lenient myself. <laughs> um, somebody that I'm not friends with, but someone that actually follows me. Um, recently, just last month, they wrote me on Instagram and said, Sis, don't give out no more discounts. You don't need to give out no more. Like, that's it. And I'm like, okay, wait a minute. Let me let me think about this a little bit. Okay. <laughs> she may be right. Um, sometimes we do try to give out discounts sometimes to bring in. Yeah. Um, but when you also understand your business and your quality, yeah. You don't always need to give out discounts. Yeah. It's going to come. Maybe not when you want to, but it's going to come regardless. And you don't want to look flaky and inconsistent when you do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you run running the sale, you're running the sale. Cool, but the sale ends on this day. That's the end. You missed it. See, why you didn't, why you weren't there? You know what I'm saying? Like, if, if that's what it is, then that's what yeah. it is. You don't want to keep well. I can do 30 because, you know, like, it makes you look like you're not credible, like you're not worth what you really charge, and it just kind of flaky and consistent, so stick to your guns, you know. I mean, friend thing, that's different, but across the board, like just stick to what you stick to your stuff. <laughs> Sometimes I think it's more of an obligation that you think you have to do. Like, you feel like you're obligated to give this discount because this person, you know, might have been here for you. Y'all hung out. Um, she shopped with you all the time. So, but if we're entrepreneurs and everybody's trying to own their own business, sometimes you have to calculate that discount and that price. Mm -hmm. Just to be honest with you, you have to go ahead and calculate that 15% on in that price. So when you give it out. <laughs> It won't hurt you. Yes. And that's just a true business move, you know, to be honest. Um, I mean, when, when it comes to the boutique, you know, I, I do discount. Sometimes I do 50% off. And, I mean, I put it on social media, and I do it for one day. And so that, that's just me giving back. And I don't know. But when it comes to family members or whatever, I do have a set discount for my family members I don't be in that discount because I feel like it, you, you automatically you know you get this discount or whatever it's not gonna hurt me because like I said as a businesswoman I calculate that discount in that price so sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do yeah, I don't know how to work this um, hi y'all my name is Aliyah Russell I'm just starting I have an online boutique and I thank y'all for y'all advice. But my question is kind of tax related for you, Taro, because you, you do a good most of your taxes. So I got everything legalized. I have my LLC, my tax ID, my business license. I have a bank account. So I'm in a stage where I'm trying to figure out how to do my taxes so that I can write off what I need to write off and pay what I need to pay. So I was wondering if you have any advice on taxes or do you do coaching on business taxes. Yeah, I would say, um, to answer the thing, I would say um, bookkeeping is extremely important. Mm -hmm. So being able to have apps that are tied to your um, credit card and making sure you're always using that so it categorizes in those categories so you can write them off. Um, and then once at the end of the year, it really helps your accountants come out of what you write off. I have so many things that I do through my company that I personally don't take in, because so much money moves in and out, you really gotta understand what taxes were for your LLC, right. um, and knowing what is kind of in your industry and knowing what those write-offs are, and making sure that you have a paper trail and they can be backed. Um, you have to at least have around about 75% of your receipts to back it up if you were gonna be audited. So just like, that's a, a key to kind of know to prove what you spent. But I would say that's important for everybody. If you all don't have, um, they have like book um, QuickBooks, 
There's the one I used to use all the time. Is, um, I think it's like, what was it? Um, it had like a green leaf on it. I think I told you one time. <laughs> no, it was other But it's a sub, sub under QuickBooks. But um, I would just say, like, find a bookkeeping app and make sure you keep your receipts because that's the most important thing. You can take pictures of it, all scans it in there. We have so much technology now to do that because the thing about it is, like, it's so much that you do on a regular basis that you don't know that you can write off. And, like, I don't think I've ever... <laughs> When they say you, when you pay yourself, um, when um, CEOs pay themselves a dollar, there's a reason behind that. Because as soon as you take that home, and you take whether it's a dividend payment or salary payment, I don't pay myself through um, salary. I literally pay another sub company, and out of that sub company, I have a lot of expenses that are personal. We had a meeting today. Where, you, know, you see me out there, but that's just the main point. You just gotta know certain things of like how to funnel money, not funnel. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is, being able to find the right accounts and be able to know how to do your expenditures. So that's very key. Yeah, yeah. So we definitely, if you want to be out there, let me know. But that's probably the most, it's about how much you can budget. It's not about how much you make. It's about how much you're like able to save and how to manage that. Because there's so many different things. Like you going out and talking to somebody. If you even mentioned going out as you're eating with someone that you've talked about business, write that off. Be able to say that. You start using your company card for everything. You'd be surprised. Yeah, you shouldn't be using any of your money. It's rare that I actually pay you with stuff for my own money, but yeah, that's all I have to say. <laughs> Just to piggyback, um, if anyone's like me, yes, I may have apps, QuickBooks and stuff, but I have to she manually must, write everything down. I write everything. I don't miss a beat. She writes everything. I write everything out, but that's just how I operate. No, everybody might be a little different. Yeah. But we have one more question over here. Hi, this is my first time out, so I am appreciating this event. But my name is Michelle, and I have Sip and Talk Entertainment. So I promote, and I'm always looking to network and get out and promote. And I probably am my worst because I'm always um, so happy for my black people. I go hard. And I go so hard till I leave myself out because I'm out here pushing my black people so hard for success until at the end of the day when I get home I'm exhausted and I have no energy for myself because I'm genuinely so happy for my black people. I've been doing this for many years. I'm 44 years old. I've been in the NAACP from when I was 15. So I've been grinding out here a long time and I've been behind the scene for everybody else. I've never been before the scene, so I'm actually stepping out on my own getting before the scene because I've not cared about the spotlight. So I have my daughter here with me tonight and I know she's gonna frown upon me because this is my question. I've been a grinder so hard until I get frustrated because I want her to understand that it's important as a black kid to know where you want to go in life. When we are born out of our parents' womb, we are chosen. A lot of us are not chosen by God to be, to, and let me get this so you guys can understand where I'm coming from. A lot of us are not chosen, so people instantly get offended by your gifts. Nobody is offended by a talent. Understand that. Gifts are offended. So I heard when everybody was saying that, you know, people can instantly get upset or get offended when, you know, you're doing your grind and jealousy comes into play of you, you being an entrepreneur as a business owner. Jealousy only comes into play is because you are gifted. And your gift is, is a threat to people. See, a talent is not a threat. Because when you're gifted, it, it's going to come. I don't care if it's 10, 12 years down the line. God will show up and show out in your life. Somebody has watched you. Somebody has been observing you throughout your grind. You understand me? Somebody has been watching. Just like Terrell said, people have been watching him. He didn't know where, his, where it was going to come from. He didn't know who was going to plant a seed in his life. Somebody has been watching. That's what God does for you when you gift. When you have a gift over your life, somebody God has already designed to watch over you. And 
he will bring them forth. You might be thinking, oh, this ain't going nowhere. It don't seem like it's getting off the ground. The person next to me, they already shining. They moving here. You don't know what they had to pay to get there. You don't know what they have done to get to where they get to. I have been behind the scene and I thought about it and God had to speak to me. Listen, I have you here for a reason. It may not look like it's going and where you want it to go to, but you have been behind the scene and you have made connections. That connection, you don't know who's watching you. And I love my black people from doing what they do. I, you can call me in the middle of the night and tell me, Michelle, I need you at my event. I need you to go live. I'm there. And the last thing I ask, how much you gonna try, how much you gonna pay me? Because throughout the day, as long as God keeps providing my business for me, see you, if you are not willing to be your biggest investor, you can't expect nobody else to invest in you. You have to be willing to be your biggest investor. So that means you're going to do some, some, some eating on coupons. That means you're going to be, you know, some lights, some, 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 you know, lights going out. But you are your biggest investor. So my thing was to this pretty little sister right here in this black, when she said that Ashley was so sweet to come to your and be there when you don't be afraid to ask young people for advice, let me tell you something. You are seasoned, my sister, because a wise man will listen. That's what the Bible said. A wise man will listen. So you can't be, I don't care if you 10, 12, or whatever, we can't be too high where we can't listen to someone younger than us. And I have this child here that I'm asking the question, how do, because sometimes me, I'm 44, I can't reach her, but somebody else may. I take her to different places because I feel like I'm losing her. Sometimes I feel like we're not connecting. And I want her to be a part because we have struggled, black people have struggled so long to lose our youth. And I want her to know, you don't have to go and punch a nine to five, baby. These labels that Michael Corn and everybody else, they don't need you to wear their label. You can wear your own label. You can bring in yourself. I'm right here. If I don't know it, I'm willing to reach out to somebody else that know it. This is what we have to do for our young youth. Is reach out to those that do know it. Because they're struggling. They're just struggling trying to figure out their identity. And we as black entrepreneurs, everybody in this room is so beautiful. But we have to have these events to bring out these kids. That's why I brought her. Terrell, you beautiful people. Hairstylist, she wants to do hair. Makeup artists, these kids, and when we give them our identity and when we show them that they can do something, this is where they start to reach an identity. This is where they start to say, hey, I can actually do this. I can actually make a wig. I can actually do this. But we got to start showing them how to become entrepreneurs. So my question to the panel is how do we reach these youth? How do we start out in these school systems that don't have African Americans um, um, things, especially in my town? I'm from Limestone County. I fight and grind there all the time, trying to get something going on to these for these kids to be able. We need more young African American business owners that are females coming into this town doing something. I'm willing to just do whatever I need to do to get them get someone out there. <coughs> I think uh, to answer your question, in order to reach the youth these days, you gotta have somebody that has been out here, that did that, that did everything up under the sun to get to somebody to listen to them. You can't have nobody on TV tell them to go do something because they, they don't see that person live in action. Like, you can't have TDJs come talk to her because she ain't gonna listen to them. I ain't no disrespect to TDJs or, or God, but I'm just saying though, she gonna need somebody that done been in, that did wrong, that did this, but had overcame that journey and then whatever they went through to show her, look, I did this, I went through this, I struggled. Then she listen, because she got somebody on somebody hands on that she can talk to, somebody she can nature to, somebody she can grow with. So you need somebody that's really that's all in and just like just go full throttle and tell her what to do and how to get out there and everything. Because somebody had somebody had to talk to me, because at one point in time, how I'm in now, I I wasn't like this. L'Oreal tell the brief tell you, I was doing stuff I had no business doing, but somebody had to teach me. I mean I was facing a year going to prison, facing a year doing jail time, but I had to open my mindset and say, look, man, 
If you're going to do this, you're going to do that. It's up to you. Lord, yeah. but she's one of my mentors. She'll tell you, like, and I'm just being real, but you got to have somebody that's, that's in there to help you guide you, help you lead you. Somebody got to... On that right there, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be someone the same age. It doesn't have to be someone way older than you. Um, it has to be someone that she looks at to, someone that she's looking at probably even on social media. Someone she may hang around, someone maybe an associate of someone else, because. Once she starts to find out who it is or see who it is that's doing something in her direction, that person may reach out to her. Like I said, L'Oreal was my mentor. We are not the same age. She graduated before I started college. So, <laughs> sis, sis, I'm just saying. But at the same time, L'Oreal, don't look at me like that because obviously you've, if you've impacted more than one person. You're probably close in age with Malcolm, and you impacted him. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> we're not going to speak on age anymore, okay? Because, you know what? I'm going to pass the mic. <laughs> to piggy off of what Michaela said and what Michelle has said, I'll also say that it takes a level of vulnerability on both parties. I believe all these panelists up here have been willing to be vulnerable with us and be honest with us about where it was, where it was cloudy with their family, with their friends. So I also encourage you to find somebody that you can be vulnerable with, you can be yourself with. You can be your ugly self, your true self, your crying all over the place self, and they still not judge you or take you apart. But, you know, because you're looking for a person that when you do fall apart, it's going to put you back together. So I definitely encourage to find somebody that you can be vulnerable with and will be vulnerable with you. Yeah, and I would just have to add, I feel like going back to having more oh, having more events like this and being able to expose failure and all the success, um, I feel like that's just the main key. It's so much failure that we've taken that we always forget like to share those moments. And if you did really sit down and talk with us and like had those meetings, you'll be able to see that, but that does take that relationship. Because the thing about it is, when you expose failure, you also have the chance of knocking your credibility down. Um, and that's the scary part of any success. You get so high up and it's just like, well, I built all this success and then, but did someone really, if they really found out how I got here, would they still follow me? And I feel like that's the tricky part. When you hear all these companies that say, hey, like Starbucks had to go out and ask like 350 banks for a loan and they had 350 no's. Like that gives me a chance, like, oh, I just thought it was whatever. If you, it was Tyler Perry Studios, like him hearing his story, being in his car and knowing that he's owning his own studio in Atlanta and like actually having that success. And even my partner, like being homeless, you know, going to jail multiple times and then becoming a celebrity chef and doing certain things. It just like, I feel like that exposure is needed in order for people to really find out that it's something that you can grasp. Because here's the thing, if you're a really true, true entrepreneur, you kind of, whether it's successful or not, you kind of have this grind and you're gonna make it work regardless. But I do feel like there is a, un, there is a, a type of entrepreneur that sometimes you need that and like you need that growth, you need to understand that you can do it. And sometimes there's a lot of entrepreneurs that kind of get flushed away because they don't have that other thing. Versus like people like me, I kind of, it's kind of hard for me to give certain advice because no matter what, I'm gonna do things to be successful. And like my drive is just, that's just, it's just on another level. So when I say that, but that doesn't mean that you can't create more than what I can. It's just that I'm willing to tear down more walls, but that doesn't mean that you can still, if you needed to know that I had to tear down something to kind of get there. So I would say we just need to start exposing our failures and I was failing forward. That was my motto was like, fell forward every Friday or something like that, being able to expose something that you actually did. Like, hey, I did get this contract, but I did try five other times. <laughs> <laughs> Simple as that is like, okay, well at least I gotta try five times to get it. You know, if I'm gonna go into industry, now you know like, hey, like knowing that she had got two, when she finally finds that one, but no one will know that she actually tried that many times. So when you see her blowing up and stuff like that, you see her, like you said on Instagram, it's like, you see it successfully, but you don't know like how many fails. You don't, you don't know how to start. So I feel like 
as a youth, we need to have small groups like this, and we need to start exposing our failures in a comfortable space to help people. Because that doesn't mean share your failures with everyone, because there are your customers. But being able to uh, show it to people that actually are going to benefit from that, and being able to mentor. I feel like the key thing is having a mentor that's in that particular field that has the same amount of failures. Like you said, I'm not going to really relate to someone unless they're in the same path. And that's the reason why you fail. Sometimes I realize that I failed not because I did something wrong, but because somebody's going to be saved by my failure. And you have to really know that when you go through certain things, like some failures, I'm like, hold on, God, I know, like, I was supposed to get this one. But then it's like, it's been very clear moments where he's like, I'm allowing you to fail so deeply into something like that, because I know that someone has to survive off of that testimony. You're going to get through it. Like, don't trip. You got to go through this because you have to be able to tell somebody else. So I think a lot of times it's not even that, like, it just personal things that you feel like people are getting, you know, the devil or, you know, people are hating on you. You have to go through these things in order for someone else to listen to you because if you have a cookie cutter life and everything went perfectly, I don't really relate to you. Like, you didn't, it ain't going to work for me. So that's my uh, <laughs> Also, I think that hands-on is good. Um, if she wants to do makeup, find her a, a makeup artist that can that she can stand over and look at. Um, and, you know, even with my daughter, she has started selling hair. And she asked me my advice and everything. And even though I'm an entrepreneur and she's watched me ever since she was a kid um, have my own business and everything, I did not tell her exactly what to do. You have to do your research. If you want it that bad, you're gonna go, you're gonna do your research. I'm not gonna hand it to you because you don't you wouldn't appreciate it. You know, so a lot of times you appreciate that struggle. You appreciate when you had to stay up late and look up information and you're frustrated. You know, once you get that down pat, it's like, wow, I did it myself, you know. But I, like with me being a hairstylist, I have had um, younger people to come and they want to be hairstylists. So I get them, I put them to work. Shampoo this client, this is how you do it. You know, watch me. A lot of times they love doing stuff like that. They can relate to you better when it's hands on, more so than when you're telling me how, you know, what to do or this is what you need to do. You know, give me some hands on, and I'm like, okay, this is exactly what I want to do because I'm doing it, you know. So I think when it comes to the younger people, you have to have more hands on with them, more so than in trying to explain to them, well, do A, B, C, D. You know, that's boring. They they want to, to look at it because she probably look up to L'Oreal. She might look up to another, you know, makeup artist, and I'm sure they don't mind you know, working with her with whatever, you know, she wants to do in life. But I personally think hands-on is better. Okay, guys. Um, in a second, we about to get it back popping. We're going to get DJ Immaculate back on the one, too. <laughs> also, don't forget that we do have a bar back here, and she oh. is fantastic. She so is. please remember to tip her because she's doing an amazing job. The margaritas are the bomb. <laughs> <laughs> um, but before we shut it off, um, I do want to say thank you to everyone that came out. I do want to say thank you to all the vendors that decided to participate. And I do want to say thank you to my panelists up there in the front. Um, Little do y'all know, um, two days ago, I really wanted to say no more event.